Hi guys, my name is Lemengo, and in today's video I want to show you the exact sizes of each mob in Minecraft. Before I go through all of the mobs, I need to explain some basic stuff first. And let's show the hitboxes by pressing F3 and B. And the first thing you might notice is that the random model isn't the same as the hitbox model. For example, if we try to hit the husk at the top of his set, that doesn't work. Could of course only hit him in the hitbox. And since the hitbox is important for basically everything in the game, I just want to cover the hitbox, of course. And the second thing you might notice is that the entities always have a square footprint. The length is the same as the width, and the height is different from that in most cases. And the next thing, um, I don't have to cover combined mobs. So if a, a pigman is riding a chicken, so-called chicken jockey, then um, you couldn't even push the top mob because only the chicken would be important for uh, piston pushing. So let's put him back. But in some cases, um, it's important that there's a, in fact, a pigment on top. If I drop a boat on the on them, then yeah, the boat would land on top of the pigment and not the chicken. So in some cases, it's important, and in some cases, it's not. But to keep this video uh, under an hour, I only want to cover uh, normal mobs. And also I don't want to cover sitting mobs, because in some cases mobs have a sitting animation and other mobs stand in a minecart. And there's also some inconsistency in the game. A standing zombie is um, yeah, not, not as tall as a standing skeleton, but if he sits in a minecart, he's taller than a skeleton that sits in a minecart. Okay, so now let's go through all of the mobs. I put them in different groups, um, but, but it's a little bit arbitrary in which group they are. So I have animals, then I have all the hostile mobs, and then what's left, uh, ambient mobs like bats, squids, and so on. And it's a little bit arbitrary, for example, the ocelot counts towards the hostile mob cap, but it can't attack the player. But the wolf counts towards the passive mobs, but in some cases it could even attack the player, so it's a little bit arbitrary. So let's start with the smallest mob in the game, it's the baby rabbit. It's just 0.2 wide, and yeah, as I said, length is the same as width and 0.25 high. Then a little bit taller is the baby chicken. It's 0.35 tall. And the next one is the ocelot. It's a little bit wider. Same height as the baby chicken, but 0.3 wide. Also in general, baby mobs are always half as uh, large or tall in each dimension as their adult counterparts. So an adult ocelot would be 0.6 by 0.7. So the next one is the baby wolf, also 0.3 wide and 0.425 high. Then the next one is the baby pig, it's 0.45 times 0.45, so the hitbox is a yeah, cube. But this is a yeah, perfect example where the render model isn't the same as the hitbox model. The whole head, which is larger than the body, uh, hardly counts to the hitbox. Then the next one is the rabbit. Um, it's not as wide as the baby pig, it's 0 0.4, but it's a little bit taller, it's 0 0.5 high. And I also yeah, sorted the mobs from little to tall. Then we have the baby sheep, 0 0.45 wide and 0 0.675 high. Then the next one is the adult chicken, 0 0.4 wide and 0 0.7 high. Then the baby cow, it's a little bit wider than the chicken. It's 0 0.45 wide and 0 0.7 high, and the baby mushroom has the same size. So mushrooms are always the same size as cows. Then we have the adult ocelot, as I said, 0 0.6 times 0 0.7. Next in the list is the baby polar bear that got added in 1.10. It's 0 0.65 wide and 0 0.7 high. Then the next ones are the baby horses. And it uh, doesn't matter if you have a baby donkey, baby normal horse, baby mule, baby skeleton horse, or baby zombie horse. They all have the same dimensions and they're uh, yeah, a lot shorter than they appear. So the hitbox only goes below their chest level, can't hit them at the top. And they are 0 0.6982 wide and 0 0.8 high. And that's a little bit odd number, I think, in 1.9 their size got changed from 0 0.7 to this odd number, but I don't know why. 
Also, you might be wondering where I get those values from. Um, I had help from Demon. He looked in a code for me to get the 1.10 values. And I had to test it for the 111 mobs manually. So I just summoned them in and tried to push them under certain obstacles. Um, this way I got the dimensions. So next on the list is the wolf. It's 0 0.6 wide and 0 0.85 tall. Also you might be wondering what happens if you tame them, then it just gets retextured. Um, so a tamed wolf has the same size as a tamed, uh, uh, an untamed one. Same goes for the ocelots, of course. A cat has the same size uh, as the wild ocelot. And so next one is the pig, the cube, 0 0.9 by 0 0.9. Then we have the new 111, the baby llama, 0 0.45 times 0 0.9375. Then here, that's the first drop that's taller than a block. It's the sheep, 0 0.9 by 1.3. And then the cow, a little bit taller, 0 0.9 by 1.4. Mushroom, of course, is the same size. And then we have the polar bear, um, which is wider than a block, 1.3 by 1.4. Then we have all the horse types, this time the adult ones. And they are 1.3964 wide and 1.6 high. And it doesn't matter if you have a mule, donkey, so the donkey yeah, seems to be a little bit smaller than, than a normal horse, but they have the same hitbox. Same goes for the skeleton horse and zombie horse. And the tallest animal is the llama, 0 0.9 by 1.875. Before I continue with all the hostile mobs, um, let's go to a silly example that I made. For, so if you build something like this, where I put trapdoors on the inner side of blocks, in a normal uh, plains or jungle biome, then only chickens would spawn because they would always spawn in the middle of the block and rabbits don't spawn in jungle and plains biomes, so they don't spawn anyway. And only the chicken would fit between those um, trapdoors. So you could make a very simple ch uh, chicken only farm. And if you want to build this in a jungle biome, for example, then the ocelots, which count to the hostile mob cap, would also be able to spawn. And this way you could also kill the chickens with ocelots. And this is, of course, not efficient at all, but it's probably one of the uh, funniest ways to build a chicken farm. And yeah, you would need to collect the drops with minecarts, of course. Then let's continue with all the hostile mobs. So the smallest hostile mobs are the Enamite and the Silverfish. They have the same dimensions. So the Enamite appears to be a little bit smaller, but they have the same hitbox. 0 0.4 wide and 0 0.3 high. Then next on the list is the Cave Spider, 0 0.7 wide and half a block high. And just a tiny bit taller is the Cuboid Small Slime. It's 0 0.51 times 0 0.51. The Mango Cube has the same size. I think the only difference between them is that the cube um, jumps higher and the text the player. Next on the list is the new 111 mob, the Vex. It's 0 0.4 wide and 0 0.8 high. Next is the yeah, Water Mob, the Guardian, that got added in 1.8. It's 0 0.85 wide and has the same height. So it's again a cube. Then the Spider, 1.4 wide and 1.9 high. Um, it's very uh, simple to prevent spider spawning, for example. Um, if you would have a block next to it, then yeah, spiders couldn't spawn. So they always need something like this, a 3 by 3 space to be able to spawn. Of course, if you put trapdoors here on the side, they still could spawn, um, but in general, they need a 3 by 3 Then the next mobs are the baby zombie types and yeah, baby zombie pigmen. So they are 0 0.3 wide and just a little bit uh, smaller than a full block, so 0 0.975. And yeah, again, it doesn't matter if you have a husk, a baby zombie villager, or a baby pom zombie pigman. All left. Next hostile mob is the Schalker. It's one by one by one blocks, so it's a block. And what's interesting is they yeah, extend the size if they uh, open up, then they're a little bit taller, then they're one by one. 0.2069 high. Then next mob is the medium slime and the medium magma cube. That's quite interesting because it's just a tiny bit wider than a block. 
And it's of course super useful if you want to prevent medium slime spawning in a nether fortress mob farm, because you could do the same as with the spiders. And it's very helpful that they're wider than a block. And you also might have noticed already that they're exactly twice as large as the small slimes, and their size scales um, with their so-called slime size. So the, um, the, the small ones are one, the medium ones have a size two, and the large slimes has size uh, four. And yeah, technically there would be a slime size in between, but it doesn't spawn naturally in survival. Uh, you could even spawn, I think, what's the tallest slime? I think 255, um, which would be um, about 130 by 130 blocks um, tall. Don't do this, cause a lot of lag. Um, so next one is the creeper, a lot taller than the ones before, uh, 0 0.6 by 1.7. Technically in between um, we have um, yeah, mobs sitting in minecarts. So a zombie sitting in a minecart is 1.5 high, skeleton sitting in a minecart is 1.39 high. But as I said, I don't want to cover this in this video. If you're interested in that, then I might make an extra video. So next one on the list is the blaze. It's exactly the same size as the player. It's quite interesting. So the player is also 0 0.6 wide and 1.8 high. Um, I think he's a little bit smaller now. If he crouches, not sure I can Pretty sure you can look it up in a wiki. Um, so next we have the zombie, and there's a whole group of mobs with have the same size. So 0 0.6 times 0 0.95. Zombie, zombie pigman, evoker, vindicator, all got added in 111. Then a zombie villager appears taller than a zombie, but has the same height. Same goes for the husk, also, yeah, same height, and the witch also has the same size as all the yeah, zombie mobs or illager mobs. So let's continue with the skeleton mobs. We have the normal skeleton and the stray that got added in 1.10. They all are 0 0.6 wide and 1.99 high. And here we have the elder guardian. It's just a little bit smaller than two blocks. It's 0 0.9975 large in each dimension. And then here we have the large slimes. As I said before, they have slime size 4, so they are 4 times as uh, large as the small slimes. They are 2.04 blocks in each dimension large. Also the same goes for the uh, large magma cube. They just jump a little bit higher. And then we have the wizard skeleton, which, which is interesting. They are wider than the normal skeletons. They are 0 0.7 wide and they are 2.4 blocks high. I think the height got changed a lot. I uh, remember in the past uh, they would spawn on the slabs at this height and this got changed at some point. Then they were no longer able to spawn on the slabs and now they're again able to spawn on the slabs. So this got changed a lot. Also it seems like that um, their yeah, width isn't important for the spawning algorithm. Only the yeah, width of the skeleton is important. So if we go back to this example, um, with the chicken farm, I also used the same uh, method in a nether fortress farm where I put trapdoors on the side here. Technically the wizard skeleton shouldn't be able to spawn because um, its hitbox would collide with the trapdoor blocks. But um, yeah, they, they spawn. So um, yeah, that's quite useful. So the next hostile mob in the list is the enderman, 0 0.6 wide and 2.9 high. So a little bit under three blocks. Then we have the wizard boss. Um, its size got changed a lot in the past, but at the moment it's 0 0.9 wide and three and a half blocks high. Then here we have the ghast, four before, as always, and here we have the literal giant. It's exactly six times as large as the normal zombie model, so it's uh, 3.6 times 11.7. Would be awesome if we would get him in survival at some point. Um, yeah, just think about the mob farming possibilities. I uh, could do the same as with the ghast. We can actually put them in minecarts and yeah, ghast swiper is already good, but a giant swiper, for example, for witch farm would be awesome. So, and yeah, last foster mob is the largest one, which is the Ender Dragon. Um, it's yeah, the first one with a multi hitbox model, and you can only hit them with the, the small hitboxes, but the outer one, which isn't that important, is 16 by 8. So now let's cover what's left. Here we have the squid, 0 0.8 
times 0 0.8. Then we have the bed, which is surprisingly tall. I think they made this on purpose, so they are easier to hit. They are 0 0.5 times 0 0.9, so a lot, yeah, the hitbox is a lot taller than the yeah, uh, render model. And then here we have the snow golem, 0 0.7 wide and 1.9 high. Then we have the Iron Golem, 1.4 wide and 2.7 high. I think the size or height also got changed at some point. And next we have the Minecart. It's interesting. It's a little bit smaller than a block. It's 0 0.98 wide and 0 0.7 high. Then here we have the normal boat, uh, 1.375 wide and 0 0.5625 high. Then here we have the armor stand, half a block wide and 1.975 high. That's interesting, falling blocks are smaller than blocks. So they are 0 0.98 wide and high. And that's also interesting, the XP orb is half a block wide and high. And the item is just half as uh, large. So you could uh, easily sort XP ops from items, for example. So the last uh, uh, entity I got is the Ender Crystal. It's yeah, two by two. And there are more entities in the game, uh, projectiles and so on, but I don't think they're that interesting, to be honest. Okay, thanks a lot for watching. Hope this was useful for you. Have a good day. Bye bye.